Yeah. Aloha Kako. Welcome to tonight's show of Kanakanology. Um, tonight we're so pleased and honored to welcome back the Ohana Nihipali. Tonight we have Anakala Kunani speaking with us, um, sharing about his life journey and some aspects of his work. Mahalo Nui for joining us tonight. We so um honored to have you folks with us again. Oh, well, mahalo. Uh for bringing us all here safely this evening and in our lives in spite of what's going on around us daily with this COVID and um, you know affecting a lot of our families and we pray each and every day for everyone to be safe. Um, I'm here with Epo because you know there's a lot of things that have we've done in our life uh, over the past few decades and it was difficult trying to put it all together for one hour so I just figured I would choose something that was um, dear to both of us um, but I just want to say that you know uh, I'm on Molokai my ohana originally from Kalawau Molokai before the uh, Kalaupapa settlement and they were removed for it and now nobody can go back over there because the National Park Service seems to have taken over the DHHL kind of gave them the kuleana. So um, one day I'm hoping that before I hala that we can go back and see if we can just have uh, time with our kupuna there on Kalawao. Um, Nihipale Oana. Yeah, we now we move from there to Kainalu and I guess they didn't like well, maybe, you know, I just my speculation because um, they moved from there to North Shore, Oahu, Haula, Kahuku, uh, Lai, that whole area there. And um, there, my Hana was quite prolific, you know, my tutus had 19 children. He married one, Dimelo, Portuguese. And uh, we got that, Mo'okua Hau too, my uh, Mo'opuna. I'm hoping he will be on this evening listening at least. and my brother and others from my ohana, um, uh, that uh, some make, because you know, it was in those kind of times, you know, not everybody went to the hospital to give birth. How will aside, you know, with the old broken down holiday that they had, the tire on the roof kind, and uh, you know, mosquito net, mosquito punk. But um, my dad, I think was number seven in the family and he uhala already too, but he was a hardworking person. Yeah, he had four boys he had to raise. And um, we brought up in uh, uh, the housing area in Honolulu. We grew up in public schools, uh, merit housing, palolo housing, lanakila, um, and public schools on uh, Kaiulani, palolo, and all those areas. But I got fortunate and I was I think Akamai enough to pass the Kamehameha Schools test for seventh grade and went there from seven, seventh grade uh, and graduated in 1968. And then, uh, you know, I, um, I tried to figure out what I'm gonna do with my life after that. And uh, from there, you know, it, I guess I went into a, uh, I became a veteran of domestic wars. I became a police officer for 11 years and, um, I did that uh, all over Honolulu and then ended up in Wahiwa. I got hurt, so I got out. But uh, my life has always, our lives have always been, um, you know, we have two, two Kamali, uh, Kunani Jr., he's uh, 52, our daughter Nohialani is 48, and we have four Mopunas, Okane. My oldest is uh, from my daughter and the youngest from Nohialani, and the middle is from our son. Uh, and um, um, yeah, so, you know, social, uh, I guess because of the upbringing and what I saw, how I grew up, I felt like, you know, I had to continue my social services. So I went into the department, but like I said, got hurt. But after that, the skills that I learned from them and the, the fact that it gave me the confidence to 
still continue meeting with people and, and trying to uh, do other things in my life that can uh, try to help uh, in the um, types of community work that I've dedicated my ourselves to Ipo and I. The arts was what we started off with. Ipo, you know, she's a prolific artist all the way around. Any, anything she put her hands on, she can, what you gave, what she talked about last week was just the tip of the iceberg, you know? Uh, and I tried to do the best to put out some of her artwork out there, but, uh, and she still continues to do that today. Um, but that was a struggle too, the art, you know? So we, we ended up creating our own nonprofit there as well too. And to try to get little grants so that we could do what we, we, we knew was the first charter school that, uh, you know, before charter schools began. And we uh, got a grant, or I wrote a grant to DHHL, got a small little grant. And then we shared her, she shared her manao. Uh, and uh, we formed the uh, Uhane Noa Foundation, Free Spirit. We started off uh, with artists, other artists in uh, Hui, Mal uh, Hui Nawao, some nice prolific artists, Rocky Jensen and his Ohana and uh, Kaosito and his Ohana. And some very, you know, uh, Eric Enos, uh, very prolific, in, you know, and uh, we, they struggled. And so I saw the struggle that Ipo was going through trying to create. And I, I, so what I did is I took over, I did the business aspect to that so that she could create. And uh, from there, uh, we, you know, she, you know, we went into other, other fields. So I, I just want to share with some the other community experiences, but the one thing that I'd like to say that, um, you know, you know, we, we, we just cannot sit by, yeah. You know, if we, we're going to uh, walk the talk, so to speak, everything that we've done is doing that. Um, and I'll go over a, a list, but there's one thing we try to say that, you know, if we want our more puna to remember is us by, <clears throat> is that we try to make a change to Juliao. Um, we're not that type to sit back and just let things happen. We try to make a difference there. So we guided by our kupuna always and uh, the strength and the confidence that hui malama ina kupuna o Hawaii ne gave us our kumu, um, Ed and Pua Kanahele of uh, Mokoke Ave were our mentors, our kumu. They um, gave us all the tools and the, the, the meaning of the pule and the protocols that we had to learn there, but uh, I'll get back with that. But some of the other um, aspects so that I can focus on that is just to let you know that we're also involved with um, many different public and private foundations in the Hawaiian community, locally, nationally, internationally, uh, and the repatri repatriation of Ivi Kupuna and the Moipu from institutions and museums throughout, not only the continental US, uh, after the inception of the uh, NAGPRA, the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act passed in 1991, uh, that helped us give a voice to our kupuna who were taken in whatever capacity they were. And if, uh, you know, many who have seen some of uh, Puhi Pao and Joan uh, Namako Aina, they were, you know, the pioneers for the, uh, for, for the communications in, in video. And if they had seen the Who Will Save the Bones, that documentary, uh, that was the beginning to me of the end of that kind of desecration where 1100 kupuna ivi were taken from the Wahipana at Honokahua, Maui. Uh, you know, immediately thereafter, uh, that that uh, the kahea went out. They told us, "Oh, this is happening on Maui." We jump on a plane, Ipos Ohana from Maui, so we went and 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 became part of that initial uh, attempt to 
create an awareness on the part of the people that were trying to do. This is the Ritz Carlton Hotel that was trying to build right on our Wahipana of our Kupuna. 1100 Kupuna already were excavated. Uh, the Kanaka that were part of that, you know, they, they had their hands tied because there was really nothing that they could do but just monitor. Uh, the laws were not set up. So NAGPRA was a good um, beginning because from there then, uh, you know, um, others started to come around and uh, notice uh, we initially, that group that uh, converged on Honakahua stopped that. Yeah, and I got a big chart in the back of me that talks about in 1987, how that all evolved. Uh, Governor Wahe'e was that time the, uh, I mean, 1997, I kept uh, talking about archives, I keep newspapers, I keep all kinds of stuff from everything that I've done. So, you know, I got a whole 40 foot container of a library of books and news and folders and everything that I want to share with everybody. But um, <clears throat> that that is my own library, yeah, that I've accumulated. Um, it's really so, organized, it's really organized. <laughs> there is a treasure trove. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm kind of a book hoarder myself. So I'm like, yeah, I, will my love I love that kind. Wow. Um, is now yeah. a good time, Anakala, to share the Namalamo Ina Kupuno Hawaii brochure? Well, um, almost. I, then let me know. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just. A few other things. Okay. Um, <laughs> we now are was another. Thing that we had done, who now was a sovereignty education program that we had uh, became the director of, and that's uh, that was really important because uh, you know we need to understand that there's you know from that was uh, the beginning uh, of getting uh, a broader base of people to understand. We had a million dollar grant from Anna, the administration for Native Americans, and the Kahia went out for project director, and you had like every sovereign group that was out there sat on a board I had like 50 different board members and oh my god I, I applied for the I applied for the job and I don't know what I was thinking except that uh, you know I was doing this or you know through the arts and I'm thinking oh you know I gotta learn a little more and try to see how we can expand this and so uh, I went in for an interview and oh I got the I got the executive director's job there for at least a year and a half or so and we were able to create um, councils from from there and it was for three years I was able to get three hundred thousand dollars from the, the state legislature for that too because people wanted to know and they were outside of the realm of what uh, the Anna grant covered was for Native Hawaiians to learn about this so I said well if you folks in public schools you guys in the hotel or you legislators want to learn then you guys got to pay for the ex experience uh, you got to contribute so that was part of it but um, you know I've been involved with Aloha First, uh, Bumpy Kanahele we did a lot of sovereignty education programs over there it's just a matter of building curriculum on everything that we've done there was a curriculum we did there for Kuleana Waiwailike, which is a curriculum of economic sovereignty based on reconciliation, the apology bill, which we someday need to talk about that uh, in more depth because the apology bill, don't we, we cannot put that on the site. The apology bill needs to be, there's a section one parenthesis four and five that talks about reconciliation. It has not been defined that needs to be People need to understand that that's a key for us to all these fires, all these little issues going on in our, you know, the land rights, the water rights, the fishing rights, all of this stuff. We need to have that discussion and paid for by the feds. They promised us that in the apology bill. The church run apologized. They gave us some, a million dollars and some land back in Waikia, Waikia Uka. And uh, uh, so, you know, they, they came through. And then I was part of a, the, the Native American Rights Fund. So I sat there and I tried to get all of these issues for six years as a vice chair. I sat on many different uh, committees, uh, investment committees, audit committees, and I, I got to see how they operated uh, their, their organization because they like the legal arm for Indian country. Um, and 
the uh, the fact that people like to say that you know Hawaiians, you guys gotta get your act together. And yeah, we have we have got to know act together. If you know what the Kuei petition is all about, you get forty thousand people for our kupuna. Every Hawaiian out there, their kupuna won't sign this petition. So what Ipo and I did is created another project, the Kuei Peace Memorial Wall project, and hopefully we can come back visit that because it's a memorial that we want to set up, just like they have all the memorials for all the wars and all the heroes, but we know more for our heroes. Our heroes were the kupuna that would stand up to the United States of America and say that we don't want annexation. So maybe we can create walls and put their names on these walls of Oahu someday uh, so that we can honor their presence. So we have a touchstone we can go to and do our pule and pray with them and see and ask them, come on, continue to guide us. Because you know, we're in our seventh decade, we get our kupunas in the eighth decade, and you know, we don't have much time left for us, but hopefully that'll be one, you know, one, one thing to do. So Aloha first, and then Native Hawaiian Advisory Council, and I was a delegate for Aha Hawaii, or even a Native Hawaiian Convention, Pu'a Foundation, um, Native Hawaiian Advisory Council, Aloha first, Native planters, where I, you know, really got to uh, meet with the rapoons and other people doing farming and we did our own farms and that's another thing right there and uh Oahu island barrel councils now you know maybe we can get on to the first brochures which is the hui malama brochures that was created you know when we started hui malama by uh aid and poor and the people that were all part of it and this was like something that we had to put out like everybody else does and um uh that was to create an awareness and, and the awareness grew soon we started to have people from all the islands uh, represented and uh it didn't pour, you know um, they were our mentors our kumu they they, they helped us through our cultural and uh, spiritual inspiration they helped research and their whole family the kanaka olis and kanahili yeah they were instrumental because when we had that uh the Honokahua happened and everybody converged on the Capitol to have a 24 hour vigil at the Capitol um, to draw attention. All the kumus came and every hour they went and did a did chants at the, and, uh, at the Capitol until the next morning when the, all the legislators came in and they, they had to listen. You know, then we had a group that went up to visit with Governor Waihe'e and then he, he basically you know, shut it down and had an agreement and had that whole project move Malkus. So um, when we talk about, you know, how this thing started, it was at Honakahua and Hui Malama was at the forefront. And not everybody that converged on Hui Malama became part of Hui Malama, but they were already become like part of Hui Malama for what they did there. Guys came over, not only flew over, but they came over from the boat, you know, like Bobby Al King guys over from Molokai. And uh, Molokai showed their representation like they're doing tonight, you know, and uh, I, we love Molokai. We, we, uh, Ainaha now is uh, Oahu, uh, but, you know, we live 38 years, well, we live uh, in different areas, 38 years in Pupukia, but uh, we finally come, came back to our, our Aina uh, from our Ohana, and we in Ho'olehua, and we love it here. Yeah, ho holy hua Molokai, and we got some beautiful, very strong people here, like Kara and her mom, and uh, Auntie Irene, and her mom, her, her mom Judy Caparita, and we were able to do another project here in 2019, drawing attention because Oa had put out a a paper about the um, the amendments that the Office of Native Hawaiian Relations uh, did. Uh, when they started as a result of the apology, there were all kinds of uh, reports and everything, but all the reports never, you know, all the recommendations that were done for that was never really followed up on. And so that's why we're in that kind of dire straits today. So here, here is also the brochure that the DLNR had put together um, for that time, uh, so that because now the state was picking up. Right after that Honokahua, the state started to, hey, you know, we better start doing something over here because 
the natives are restless and uh, you know they're gonna come down on us real hard and we we you know, basically did so they put this brochure in order this yeah and it, they start then the the, the the state barrels you know laws act 306 and uh, at that time Edward Ayao a fresh um, young attorney uh, started uh, to uh, cut cut his teeth on on you know putting his experience his what he's learned from his uh, law and uh, he was very instrumental in helping us uh, write the barrel laws for Hawaii uh, and then he became the um, the uh, director for the Shopo and we did a lot of uh, work there because they had accumulated but was so unorganized and brother put it all together and we started to do we, we, kanuho you know putting all the kupuna back into the aina that were accumulated in the museums uh, the yeah the hui malama got started really after honokahua and that uh, in YPO, Aid and Poor wanted to reorganize um, better. So um, we had an investiture type of ceremony, I guess, in YPO, you could call it. And everybody that was important there, all the cultural people, Puna, Lerma, Hale Aloha, um, Haile, Ente Ulu, you know, all, we had great representation from a lot of people. And then Aiden Poor decided that, you know, uh, to uh, hand me the uh, po'o, being the po'o for Hui Malama in Nakupuna o Hawaii Ne. And I believe that that was because of my family, Ipo especially, she was, she still is, you know, the balance for our ohana, the balance, the spiritual aspect that she has this, this, uh, ability to be able to connect into the, the kupunas and uh, okay we can go to let's see Arizona State University so we started going out with Hui Malama and um, doing some different cultural sovereignty native rights uh, um, talks here and there and uh, Professor Rebecca Sosi who, who came over to Hawaii and helped us in the uh, not only in this area but she also helped uh, uh, some of the sovereign uh, the Akaka bill time and gave some good papers on that but uh, we were able to speak at this um, uh, conference and had some great speakers Vine Deloria you know was one of them uh, God is Red um, wrote some beautiful books but for me I when, uh, when I spoke they gave us an opportunity to they gave us all our transcripts and I put it into this uh, this uh, segment for this Arizona State Law University in 2002. My, my, my olela was uh, stone by stone, bone by bone, rebuilding the Hawaiian nation in the illusion of reality. Now I use that illusion of reality because people think that we are colonized. We're not colonized people, we occupied, okay? So once we can get maybe more information together, I know get plenty of people know that out there already, but we need the resources, you know, and I've told the resources two weeks ago, we had uh, an OHA meeting over here of the whole board, which they're going to come to you folks someday to also share. But, you know, I, I went there and I listened to all of these beautiful presentations from all the guys that get funded. And I said, you know, I'm not those guys. I'm on the other side usually. And um, uh, my manao is that, you know, you folks need to start to uh, you know, 30, 40 years we talked about this. Where's our nation building? And this to me, yeah, sovereignty is the most important, the highest level of sovereignty you can talk, think about is when you take care of your EV kupuna. I mean, you learn everything. So in order to learn, we had to do workshops and we did workshops in hollow. We did workshops in uh, making kappa. We did workshops in the protocols. So people today can continue to, you know, and I understand now that OHA is going out giving a lot of monies out to different groups and organizations. That's perfect. Um, yeah, so um, they need to do more, you know, um, and uh, uh, let's see, Kikuni Blaisdell, he helped us, you know, in some of the places. And then one of the things what, that was happening around the same time, because we we're beginning to grow and then people was looking, pointing fingers and this, 
this kaain, you know, we had we had the good fortune that uh, we were able to have a session at the museum, a group of us, small group of us, Puna Lerma, uh, Aloha, myself, Ipo, and one brother from Maui. And um, we had we had the good fortune to be able to do some prayer with the Ka'ai in the museum at that time. And suddenly, um, away, you know, they, they won't disappear and, uh, from the museum. And we got, because of what we were doing and we were so on the opposite side of the usual, you know, um, order of things that people started pointing their fingers at us like we were the ones who were going to take, it, take the Ka'ai's. Mm -hmm. And that that's that wasn't true, yeah. So uh, finally, uh, after a debate, I think a couple more articles over here around this. But people were beginning to realize that, oh yeah, the kaais came from our uh, uh, your aina, Mokoke Avi, Waipio. Uh, maybe they should go back there. Maybe that's where they went. So they had this own their own uh, uh, meetings and concluded that that was the right thing to do. I think there's a few more articles. Yeah. People felt they were safe in YPO, although you had some of the um, the uh, kupunas who thought that they were the, uh, the, the ruling class to yet. Uh, the name started with on K, but ended on A, but I'm not gonna say them, but they, they wanted, they thought that they were the ruling class, so they wanted the Ka'ais back, and boy, they, they put us to the ringers and pointed fingers, but again, yeah, um, people thought they went back home and the home was correct. Uli? Um, Kunani mentioned um, Dr. Kikuni <clears throat> Blaisdell, how he helped. Uh, he was so supportive uh, you know, in the movement. Um, Kikuni also taught us about the anatomy, um, uh, anatomy of, of the EV. So that when we did, um, you know, uh, take care of them, uh, the kane, uh, they placed them properly, you know, I mean, appropriately and sacredly, you know, everything was done very at its highest uh, respect. Yeah, a um, lot of work to was put in. Not it's not for everyone, but those that had the kahea that were trained um, from Pua and Ed. Kanahele, um, Kanakoole, Kanahele. Um, they were the they're the only family that stepped forward that were still doing traditional burials for their for their ohana, to um, in their um, in their family from their ohana. So we're very 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 grateful to them for so, being the forefront. So that book you just showed with Roger Rose, the pink violet book, yeah, reconciling the past. This book was written before they were taken and you know if people understood there's a second page to this <clears throat> that oops upside down um <clears throat> the contents they were so curious of the contents of the kai that they won't you you have to if you have this book uh kind of it a lot of pain to read it to point out what they had done in in the museum to those kai. So when people talk about, oh, you know, you Hawaiians, you guys got to return the kai's and stuff like that. Well, you know, uh, unfortunately, one of the brothers said that in one of the articles that it, you know it wasn't uh, in a time that um, you know Christianity was just beginning to come into the fold of our Hawaiian culture and our spiritualism, our spirituality, and uh, there, you know, it was that way. In that highway or hit the road, you know, with our spirituality. Um, so, the, what what was done in there was was pretty heavy. If you get people get time, read this book, reconciling the past, because it talks about what they would do. I don't want to get into that because, uh, you know, it's one other heavy that I read or not. There's too many already that these guys want to do to us. But um, so we want to welcome the challenge, yeah, of this kuliana. And not everybody ready for this stuff. So um, uh, some of the journeys we went on to repatriate uh, in 1997, I believe this was, we went to Nihoa Neka. We wouldn't go rent one 51 foot sloop and the uh, uh, about half a dozen or so of us went to Nihoa Neka and we sailed in November 
and everybody thought we was crazy. You are sailing the worst time for the seas. And, you know, we, we had some kupuna that had to be kanu uh, they, that they had brought to the museum a while ago that they took off from Nihua and Mokumanamana. So the pictures you see now is our trip to, uh, to um, uh, this, these ones are Mokumanamana, but the Nihua one, and well, I'll ex explain. The bottom one here is the, that little cut in the, okay, well, Okay, that little cut there is where we had to go in, but the cliff onto the right of it is where they had to climb up to get to the a site where they were going to canoe the kupuna. And that's oh, a, a tall, tall wall, cliff. And you misstep, you down into that ocean. And that ocean is, is unforgiving. And you see the waves around it, yeah? And one of the and puna lerma had walked past well, well, he came up to this big albatross and sitting in just like one little indention. And he was looking at the albatross and the thing was looking at him and he said, oh, he did a little prayer and he said, please let me pass because this is what I have to do. I'm trying to get our kupuna back here. This was a very treacherous um, repatriation and not, and only a couple of people were able to do that. Puna, I think, and Maka, Makanani. Um, and went on, 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 on to the island to kano these kupuna. And most of us, we stayed back on the boats. Uh, in fact, we lost a motor on one of our boats there. Mm -hmm. So this is Moku Mana Mana. But the first one was uh, Nihua and, and Neke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is on the way to, uh, to Moku Mana Mana. But uh, yeah, the Abu Chasen let him go. So he went by and he was able to converge with the other, the other, uh, people that were on the island and they did the canoe. That's, this is approaching Nihua and Necker. And on our approach uh, on this sloop, you know, you can see the water, you know, was pretty choppy going up. We had some waves, wasn't calm. Uh, and in that area below the last photograph is basically an area we chose to, to um, repatriate our kupuna. Uh, but we had to go on a little, there you go, in that one there, the one you had just before, yeah. So that's looking at, uh, we had to shuttle on a zodiac onto the rocks over there and then pull each other up and uh, to be able to now figure out how we're gonna get to where we're going because I mean, none of us been here before, but we had to go find one place to take this kupuna, you know, and go canoe them. So, <clears throat> Uh, I think it's more pictures below. Uh, yeah, and so this is the, oh, that was a crew that was there, myself on the right, Ale Aloha, Puna, Maka, and Kaipo. And uh, so we got there, and uh, they had one guy, uh, Mark, Mark Ruzan, he's the one that wrote the book, uh, The Isles, anyway, and uh, Uncle Les Kululoyo um, uh, also was on the trip. Um, <clears throat> They basically risk their lives. Yeah. Anything could, the kupuna were protecting them. So the prayers that you know we were taught was was prayers to uh, grant us you know the ability to do this work and to protect us in this work and to let the kupuna know that you know noho oe hele au we gonna leave you here and we gotta go. We we're not here to glean any information from you. We just want to do our work, which is, and we're not looking for any uh, stars or, or, or money for this. It was so that we can return the mana back to the aina, and then that mana can come back to our people, you know, uh, just like you kano the, the kalo, is kano our kupuna, our, that's where we came from, the kalo, yeah. So, um, yeah, on that trip, I was the, um, well, we had prepared, we had some money, so we had prepared Ipo and I and Puna, we went go shopping Costco, we did some uh, pre-cooking and then we had some cooking that had to be done, so nobody wanted to stay down below because they got seasick and uh, not that, you know, wasn't affecting me, but I became a self-appointed cook over there and made meals and unfortunately one of my first meals that we did was uh the the, <laughs> the corned beef and cabbage and that wasn't too good for sailors for that first sale when we went but 
<laughs> it was okay. It worked out. <laughs> yeah. And then we also fished, you know. Um, yeah. So we caught Aku, you know, and uh, the, yeah. And uh, we, we used that to help supplement some of the journey back home because we had kind of uh, used our, our food sources going up. Now, this is the motley crew that went up, uh, you know, we were already back, but um, it was on the way back, I'm going to show some other pictures, like, in the, you know, in the background, you see, going up was five, six, eight foot waves, and, you know, they had to use the motor, you couldn't really use the sails on this boat, this is a sloop now, a sail boat, so we had to use motor and gasoline, and Oh, you, you know, you try to sleep below in shifts and smelling gas and oh, terrible. We had the working crews, you know, uh, of two because safety. And uh, we had some good watermen over there, you know, and uh, we had some good food. Uh, and then, of course, when we got back, this is Hokulea was on, uh, was, was, uh, uh, was docked for repairs in back of us. And ironically, and that's my Ohana over there, of course, Ipo and um, my Mopuna and his dad on the left hand side. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, so, but we, we came back after we did both islands. Malie was just flat. And some of the photographs may show that it was just so flat that, you know, we wouldn't spark out at three, three um, uh, glass balls floating on there. And that was, well, I don't know if that one was on turtle, but I think there was one glass ball in one net. So the first guy saw him, that was his, yeah. So that's how the water was coming back. We had nighttime, it lit up with all of this. I don't know if the proper name is phosphorus or what, but yeah. all this blue energy that was in the in the yeah. ocean. Yeah. And I mean, you're in the ocean, there's no, not even a plane flying by and more or less another ship around. If, you know, I'm glad we had um, people that, ma, the, uh, we hired one holy crew, that's their boat, yeah? So um, they knew what they was doing and they thought we was, kind of nuts too for going out in November, but you know, they, they, they made it with us. And then that was a, a, a you know, that, that was the, the, the captain there in the middle. And when we got back then, hallelujah on the left, I'm on the right and in the middle, we're trying to figure out oh, what direction we're going. <laughs> so we're all pointing in our own direction and they're okay, okay, whatever. But uh, every time we, we came to the islands, who, what greeted us in that photo, you had just, yeah, it was the Eva. The, the, frigate birds they came and way out into the ocean they seen us and they came out and they greeted us so let's see where are we at now well i forgot the order that we was at so there they are yeah they're flying over us and then i guess halelo got inspired and he wanted to have cacao uh, of the frigate and people did that too and this is the mark rural zone He's the biologist, he's the photographer, he's the representative from the, uh, from the uh, Northwest, uh, well, the, the scientists. And uh, he wrote in his book, The Isles of, Ref uh, Isles of Refuge, about the return of the EV. And I got some, I think some, some of those pictures, uh, one of them with Maka on the, on the front. But this is his personal note that he wrote that uh, we kind of like, um, when we got onto the island, we told them, oh, thank you very much, but uh, you cannot come with us because, you know, we're going to do something that, you know, you train for do what you do. We train to do this. So this was our time to be with the kupuna. There were many things we had to do. We had to put our, food, our clothes in bags and freeze them so that we don't take stuff on the island to pollute the island. But when we got there, uh, you had bugs and stuff on the island already, but they're trying to limit that, yeah? So he wrote this note in the Isles of Refuge, if anybody interested, uh, there's a <coughs> chapter in there. Uh, oh boy, really quaint. Okay, so where we next on the slide show? Yeah, this was Maka going his pool. Eala uh, was always something that we did every morning. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, and so the next journey, you know, after we had returned, oh, we got invited with um, Bahalelua was a uh, Hokulea. They decided that Hokulea with an escort boat uh, wanted to make that journey to Niho and Necker. So we were invited Bahalelua to take a steel 100 foot boat from Kaneohe. Uh, Bay, I forget the name of the boat, Kalamai, but we we were escorts too, and uh, this is off Nihua, and the crew on that, um, besides Nainoa, who, you know, was Haleloa, I believe, and uh, uh, other people that, um, so we we started off in, in on Kauai, and uh, and Ipo was the, was the, you know, she was the, of course, she the master chef. What I was doing is really learning from her at that time on the other side, on the other cruise in 97. But her and other wahine, they just took over and all the fish we caught next slide. And we dried it on the deck. Yeah. So when we started to approach the <laughs> islands, then all the pool went, went off, you know, announcing, we're here, we're coming, you know, and, uh, and, and Maka and, and everybody else who had the pools just bust out the pool and we just, you know, were in awe that we were able to come back and for another vision of what had taken place in 97 under so much stress because, you know, it, it, nothing that we knew was going to take place. So that's the captain and that's part of the crew. Yeah. Gang from Kauai, yeah. and then some of the fish we we caught, and you know we we supplemented our food again, and then we you know came back and we ended up at the uh, outside of Ni, uh, Nihau, yeah, and we the the we both the boat ships anchored out there, and uh, we were able to actually go off um, and go. Holo holo, but we couldn't go on the island. We just stayed holo holo outside, and 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 then Wilma Hola was part of the crew, uh, and Nainoa sent his one one uh, one man canoe to come over to our ship and and said, "Oh, you know, we like uh, Ipo and Kunani to come on the Hokulea." So we were invited by Nainoa, and we went there and we sailed from Nihau. Initially, we, we said, hey, we had Kuliana on this boat. Uh, if we go over there, how are we going to do that? But He refused it three times. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then he came himself and said, hey, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up on on, on, uh, on the Hokulea, sailing from Nihau to Lehua. <laughs> and we got firsthand, you know, of the island and saw the desecration of Lehua. Oh, my God. You know this military, what they did. I mean, you get missiles still sticking up yeah. from the from the Aina over there. So, you know, uh, and I know this one. This one is Lehua. Yes, I believe so. And um, we um. There were shells, um, bomb shells, bomb shells, and missiles and the that side. were unexploded. And you know, that's why they like to stay away from these places because they it never was, clean them up. It was trash, really badly. Like, you know. Badly. You can see it off from the boat. You can see it. Oh, boy. So that's one of the motley crew guys uh, that was on the boat. <laughs> on Hokulea. But we ended up in Kauai, and it uh, was nice that uh, we were able to have that experience. Uh, so where we at next? I know we're running out of time. So this is the the crew list that was on the uh, on that, that boat. Uh, from each island, myself and uh, mm -hmm. Big Island uh, and Kauai and Lanai and Nihau, all of those, all those people on September 3rd, 2003. So, yeah, Wilma Hole, Edward. So this one here is, um, this next brochure was one of the things we had done for the uh, Panalaau, the, the Kamehameha schools, during the war time, they had sent some 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 Hawaiians down there from the schools, and uh, I guess the the military wanted to uh, you know to say that you know they weren't part of it, but they wanted these guys to keep 
and attract out for the, the Japanese at that time. And these two brothers when gave their lives, they, they died on this, uh, on that uh, expedition there. And the family had asked us because they were buried in uh, Scofield Barracks and the family had asked that uh, they wanted them exhumed and taken to be placed in, into Kaneohe. So we went up there and the first time we ever did that kind where we took remains out and then the, where the military had them hermetically sealed in, in you know, steel containers and we removed them from there, put them in kappa, put them in hala baskets. And then uh, Noel Kahanu had helped us. Uh, that was part of her family, yeah. And this, then we put them in Kaneohe uh, at the veterans portion. The yeah, they were killed by the Japanese. <sighs> That was a whole life so now here we are going on some of our Who's other. Uh, <laughs> Who's that? Our hoi hoi, yeah. Uh, I like to mention also some of the hoi hoi, I mean, some of the barrels that we had done, uh, uh, Wahipana for, we had Billy Fields help us in building some of those burials, but I didn't, I wasn't able to get anything from there except we, we did some really heavy work. But here is Ipo. We're on the way uh, either in London or after we went to London and they refused to allow us to see our kupuna even. They never even liked us, you know, uh, an opportunity. So we had a call, Some somebody said, hey, you know, uh, Scotland is, is open. <laughs> so we jumped on a train and we went to Scotland and um, <laughs> all behave. All behave. <laughs> you know, I thought it was, uh, you know. <laughs> we had some fun on our trips too, you know, not all serial. And then, uh, you know, this I think is of either London, or, yeah, I think in London. And um, we, we went to also in Germany and some of the same trips. And, and then we went also to, to Scotland. And in Scotland, that was on the train there in uh, Edinburgh. We were, a, we were received there by uh, um, the museum director who had already repatriated to the Maoris. And so they, they told us, hey, you know, these guys really open for repatriation. So uh, we negotiated and then we came back and uh, we did, uh, we brought back our kupuna from Edinburgh. And Edinburgh was a institution that was known for um, <clears throat> uh, a surgeon. Yeah, they did a lot, a lot of uh, exploration along the surgery routes. And oh, it was kind of spooky because the place is real dungeony. I mean, literally, but this director took us in. We came back uh, and on this trip, the brother in the middle is uh, what Scott's, uh, he helped us uh, uh, go through the collection that they had. And after we had kind of, uh, we had wrapped everybody up, put them in this big case over here, we was going to ship them out. Uh, then just before that, he said, oh, you know, we made some molds and we said, oh, you made some moles, oh, you know what? Um, where are these moles of the kupuna? Because you're capturing the essence, yeah? The manas mm -hmm. in one mold. And so we didn't like that. So he showed us where it was and, was on the, and we had to go buy all these big vats of, we don't know, I had you know, body parts and everything, yeah. That one was in London below, but uh, anyway, when we went into the, the, the lower areas, a real old rickety, Es escalator, uh, elevator, then we said, okay, where is most? So they brought them all out. They said, okay, you guys get a couple of hammers. So they looked at us, hammers, I see, yeah. So they gave us two hammers and we immediately crushed all of the molds. We're taking a kupuna home and you folks not gonna get any essence from them. So we broke all the molds. I mean, literally we broke them all, yeah. you know, and, uh, then they we returned. Cast, yeah, cast of the yeah. kupuna ev. They they did cast and told them get rid of it. Yeah, you know. So were they surprised? Were they surprised when you just started smashing it? They were no. They, they, they I think know. they understood. They understood. They know. Yeah, and uh, they were surprised <laughs> because they didn't know what to expect, but they knew what we were doing and why we were doing it.
Yeah. They were supportive, no? They even Very. helped the Adam indigenous people. Yes. And what we were there, they had, oh my goodness, they had a lot of, from all over the world. And so what we were doing is we were in this place that had these, uh, these other EV from Native Americans. So we started taking on information and contacting them. Uh, oh, yeah, had, had some heavy EK uh, with even the uh, 11,000 Kupuna uh, Native Americans that were there at Berkeley. Uh, we went un in underground into this big, humongous cellar, like a prison. They I felt like they were cap captured in there and they couldn't, they were in prison. Like it was, it was really, really sad. You can just feel the Uwe that was in there. Uh, the one below, their, their whole concept is. Um, well, just think, people. If they if they didn't collect these, your children and your grandchildren and the generations after you will, can't come here to study your the remains of your ancestors. Mm -hmm. And we, and we well, we don't go to your graves and dig up your families and you know examine them and take their uh, their possessions, their funerary objects away from them, and you know put them on display like what you're doing to our kupuna in glass cases and whatever you know. So. Anyway, it was a it was a battle. It wasn't just you know happy go lucky kind of journey. This was it was heavy. It was Ooh. very very. Um, Every one of our strenuous. repatriation, whether they were nationally or internationally, uh, the UC Berkeley was one of them. Kehau Lani uh, Kawanui was there at that time. Also studied one of her. Uh, I think it was a master's degree and she helped organize because the Phoebe Hearst Museum, although they had only remains, what he was talking about, even if it had fragments, she could pick up the manna and we, after we prayed and pulled and, and chanted and they, they just latched on to her, you know, just like we talked about after what happened in Maui in that incident. She mm. got that manna for, for pick up. So she was a great uh, asset for Hui Malama and the balance, the puno, yes, yeah, so. Well, I don't let them latch on me. I try to just tell them, hey, I'm just the conduit. I'm the messenger. Tell me what you got to do, what you want. And then I, I give the message and that's it. But no ohana, you know me or my ohana. They know better, you know. So I'm going to call on my coupon and give them. <laughs> so let's move on with the <laughs> lights. <laughs> okay, so one of the last repatriation we did was going back there after London had refused us. And Kahoina going home, this journey of our kupuna. We there was a, uh, in 2013. Uh, also the uh, 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 now now we they did a, a, a video Kahoina going home at the International Film Festival, so we were able to. Um, to document that whole, yeah. Um, Tell them why you have. Yeah. So, daughter in law, they came over. Amy. So, this long journey that they had over 200 years being away, hallelujah, and negotiated with Margaret Clegg of the Natural History Museum. She had people change from the time we were there, from the previous photograph you saw, they, they were starting to understand that, you know, hey, what are we doing with these? Kupuna from other countries. And those that, you know, applied for it, you know, we, we, we just now we're dealing with different people and their, their, their mindset. And the initial guys on the left-hand side, you know, those were the guys that were not like us come back, but now we started coming <clears> back <throat> and we repatriated also from Cambridge, Cambridge as there well. There must be getting more pressure too. Like every time you have a victory of bringing the kupuna home, and my, I would hope that they would feel more pressure and shame for not doing the same, yeah? You know, it's hard to- It's so important, that. no? The museum director can just make the call and that's it? Well, it's, 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 it's hard because, you know, that's why they ha'ole, no more shame, these guys, you know? Um, uh, an incident that, you know, other incidences that, oh man, we're running out of time, but, you know, <laughs> we know that the prayers. We, that, time. <laughs> okay, we know that the prayers that we learned that that guided us. Nobody touched us. No matter if it was in Rhode Island to bring him back the Kilaau, or you know, um, trip after trip. We just, uh, you know, the timing was perfect because there was no none of this 
TSA stuff, you know, uh, just at the tail end, at the tail end. But so long as in this case, international, we had to clear all of the customs and all of, all that, you know, we're okay. We're okay. Love it and that's how many boxes of EV that they had over the 148, 44. Yeah. yeah. And so if people are interested, they can find out, they can go watch, just go Vimeo, uh, Kahoina, uh, they can watch the, that whole uh, uh, video on what, how it was done there. Every reinterment was, was different. And the kupuna, a lot of times, would jump on the plane and do their thing and want to come home. Oh, I got to tell you about <laughs> that one. So we had, we had a lot of that going on. Uh, they couldn't wait, and so they guided us a lot of times, uh, most of the time. Yeah, but, we, you know, we had um, one like that, and uh, that was from beginning. when we went back to New York and Field Museum, and you know, um, I, 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 you're just showing that slide, so I need to talk about the one of the things that came off of Hui Malama for me was an inspiration. Was that you know we need to understand that the EV is you know holds our mana. And if we're gonna go and keep burning them up through cremation, you know, we're not gonna be able to connect with our kupuna. So what I did is I, I, I worked for 10 years trying to put together an invention, which I do have now, and I have a patent for two inventions. It's, it's the, the same concept, but it's steam rather than cremation, which is a lot cleaner. And also maybe, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get this thing off the ground uh, our kickstart program because we need to get our people to understand that there is an alternative uh, and it's a it's a uh, this is the image that i drew at that time we had a good professional uh, uh intellectual property uh, uh, attorneys help me out and they were able to help get those two patents one is for the method and one is for the machine and in 2010 and 2014. So the, the idea is to put uh, up to about a 400 pound person into this machine on stainless steel trays and then using and closing them and pressurizing and then coming back it's and 20 all, hours. Oh, oh boy, and the pillar going down and then you know we can come back for the, for the liquefied uh, whatever's left over, you know, other uh, container down below. But the idea was to come back and take our kupuna EV back. And now you don't need to take them to the grave. You can take them home, put them in, in your own hale or plant one tree. And then you need to go pay somebody $20,000 just for getting a burial. We were, and, we've approached mortuaries. Yeah. They, they really would love to, this to, to happen. Yeah, we, you know, but everybody, since the COVID, a lot's been going on. So we're hoping to build a prototype if we get us. Uh, if we get sponsors, if we get people interested in wanting this to happen, you know, this will be a lot cleaner process than we didn't believe in steam, um, in burning the EV, cremation. you know, in cremation. I'm running out of grounds you know? to put the bodies. And um, this is another alternative yeah. to it. And I'll we would do it in a traditional way by, you know, and, and kappa, and, we move. you know, create jobs for um, wines to, to help. In this process. So also, this made us strong to help others even to today. Somebody had, you know, asked for help because the usual is go to an, you know, one, one uh, denomination of the choice. But we would do the whole ceremony. We would go into the crematory. We would help them prepare the body, take them to the uh, crematory, and come back and extract them and put them into containers Partial. and then help the family if they wanted yeah. to canoe with some ceremony. I even dug the hole for one of our friends, you know. Well, we did it for Everything. our families. We did family. it for our, our, our parents, our families, and, um, you know, those who asked um, outside of, you know, we, we, we went to... So that's not our profession, but, you know, we, we're hoping that we can help others I mean, every, and gain every that family, knowledge. They should have the right to their family, you know, not to be afraid. And, yeah, don't be afraid. Yeah, you know, your your, your, your hana. The mortuary should allow you to do those things. Really, yeah, and now they're talking about, you know, that last photograph of the two and he's sitting there. They're trying to pass laws to do traditional burials, like, uh, you know, 
of burial traditions again for Native Hawaiians. And I don't know, you know, nobody has approached us yet and asked, hey, you know, I hear you get this, but I understand that they did it. So I even went to that conference that next slide you showed to try to see if I can get the attention of the, the National Institute of Health because they had this big conference in DC uh, and I sponsored myself up there and I tried to plug into one of these groups, but everybody get them billions of dollars there. Everybody get their own spending routine and what they like use their money for. So they wasn't even having it, you know, but I said, Hey, you know, part of health is you got to deal with death. And here we're offering one other aspect uh, alternative, how we can deal with death. I mean, if you look at it in India, especially now with the COVID disease going on, and everybody just getting burned up right next to the river and the, your necks. And it's just, oh, that's why the steamatory steamation, I think it's a very clean process. Well, we had a lot of brothers, even Kikuni wanted it done and with um, Soli Mihail and quite a few brothers who passed away wanted this process done, but we just didn't have, we don't have our prototype. And, but thanks to you folks, Kanakaology, inviting us, you know, um, and this is like the first exposure to having this schematory announced, you know. Um, on this level. On this level. So you guys are pretty much the first. <laughs> we talked about it here and there. But again, yeah, mahalo, as Ipo said, uh, I know we're out of time already, but really, Leah, thank you, Kawi, mahalo for inviting me and I get so much to share with you. I can take about one month full of this stuff. Yes. Mahalo Nui for sharing and for all of that you have done and um for sharing your journey and so much of this work. You know, it even just through the pictures, you can feel the the mana and um the, the power in those moments, those chicken skin moments, you know, I'm thinking of like that one of the pool when they're mm. they're approaching yeah. the islands and just how oh, to think even how the kupuna must be so relieved. Yeah. yeah. 5,000, so, 6,000 kupuna back. Yeah. So relieved and how that affects all of us. And mahalo nui, mahalo nui for everything you have done. And for I think, ensuring Anna. too that the next generations are gonna continue it. That's the main thing. And because of what you your work and all of this work, I know that we'll be able to continue. I was uh, trained already. Our Kamali, our Mopuna, they know how to handle it already. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the whole idea that when we time time for Uhala, they know what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I wanted to interject something because um one of the things I learned during our journey with um, Hui Malama in Akupuna was that um, one of the biggest eye opener for me was the fact that um, when you think about burials, you pretty much think that the whole body is involved in this burial process, which the museums, you know, when you, when you think about it, the museums have the entire body yeah. But we found out that many of them just had the heads. Yeah, that was they the were price. they were measuring the cra the cranial um, sizing yeah. of the heads. A lot yeah. of it was just the heads, as I yeah. understand. That science, that science was phrenology, is what they called it. That's mm -hmm. the term. Phrenology, because they felt that oh, the bigger the head, the more mana or the more intellects. Until they figured out that Hawaiians had bigger head than them, then they did away with the whole process. Mm -hmm. oh, so that meant we had much more intelligence than the guys I was digging them up. But Po'o's, that was the price. When we had to return, Ho'i mm Ho'i -hmm. Kupuna was usually all Po'o's. Smithsonian, all, yeah. mostly Po'o's. Mm -hmm. All over the world was Po'o's. Yeah. And was really and the other thing, yeah. men, women, Go ahead. And children, had babies there too, you know, which is shocking to us. Um, Sad, very, yeah. very sad. Numbers across the forehead, the jaws is wired. I mean, all these kind of things, you know, you know, you, you cannot imagine how, you know, how traumatic it was to see, to see and view this, you know, and although we, we don't just stare at them, the kupuna just know, you know, but it was mm -hmm. very, very emotional for us to have to malama and, and take care and do what we were there for 
to, to do without um, breaking down and ue. We know. did. We broke down yeah. uh, every yeah. time. We had to. We had to always. We, let them know who we were. We started off in Hawaiian and we ended up in Hawaiian. And people said, Oh, you folks, oh, yeah, it's more nighttime and have And the biggest uh, was was our Office of Hawaiian Affairs initially. Yeah. You know, them and mm -hmm. all the, the, the battles, civic yeah. clubs and they all was, you know, they got that out of mentality. They, they wanted the, they wanted mm -hmm. the Academy Award, you know, kind of thing. And we, yeah. we weren't into all of that. No, we weren't. Yeah. I mean, even now, even now when I yeah. sit here and I listen, I remember that time. Yeah. My now, oh, just like remembering all the, um, that journey. That's right. Yeah. And <laughs> the one thing I remember the most is, is the exhaustion. Yes. You know, it's, it's exhausting work. Yes. Yeah, very, very draining. Very. Um, and one of the situations that had come up that I was really um, remembering while you were talking was about when the uh, EV came back, yeah, and some of them were together at the Smithsonian for so long next to each other in the boxes, right? Boxes yeah. underneath the staircase coming down. <clears throat> and it was, uh, I think, I'm not sure who it was that let me know this story that some of them were together so long that when they had to be yeah. separated by their ohana, yeah. um, they literally had to, the ohana had to discuss <laughs> You know, yeah. because they came from different areas of, of, of Hawaii. Yeah. And so, you know, it became this whole discussion, you know, about the mana and all, all that stuff. The one thing that I, um, I'm getting involved with now is um, Kumukahi, oh. with um, the group in Kumukahi. Yeah. And um, when I'm listening to them and the burial councils now, one of the things that I'm hearing and not just from them, but from other groups, is that um, in in putting, taking care of the EV, for example, it's just not just wrapping the the lahala and the um, you know kapa and everything. It's also the fact that they belong to somebody. Yeah, they, the EV belongs to Ohana. So I wanted to know how did that whole process work when they we just brought them back on the airplane they came off the airplane and there were these families there and mm. they just were their name there were names on the on the boxes you know there weren't they just came and knew exactly to be there you know that was the most astounding i mean things that occurred during this whole process and the and you know it was up to them to take it and and malama in their way yeah you know um plenty of those groups now they're they're going oh you know there's this specific thing that the state burial councils are saying that they got to do them this way this way this way this way and i'm thinking how does that work with mm -hmm. how we did it back then where the ohana had moi uhane Mm -hmm. yeah. They knew that their ohana was there. They knew exactly when they would pick up the, the pahu or, or the, the EV yeah. that it was theirs. And nobody said, yeah, no, nobody was there checking off, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's this yeah. whole, it's not, I don't even want to call it trust. I think it's more than that. It's more than that. We you know, it's exactly what you say, that higher, that higher part of sovereignty. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, that it, higher knowledge that we possess of whence we came, yes. who is our ohana, who is our mo'oku ahau, it's right. that hierarchy of sovereignty yes. that makes us who we are. Yes. You know. And so and the only existed because no families came about. Everything was in the hands of the archaeologists, the state mm -hmm. preservation office, the developers. They're all in cahoots with each other and nobody came forward. And then finally, when this movement started, and that was the end of that, the, mm -hmm, the developers mm -hmm. that came up already at Honokahua. And then, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you still had people though that were involved, they were part of, employed by the developer, you know, that would come mm -hmm. and Hawaiians, then they would help, we get bad time, you know, because mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're like, they're like um, the, 
you know, notoriety. They, they, they say that mm. they like the kupuna because belong to them because they're the lineal descendants because they get some palapala that say they they belong to a certain area. Okay, fine. But now you you make sure you're prepared because when we go and bring your kupuna because mm -hmm. you it's namu namu and bring them to you and we bring them in the middle of the night and we deliver to where you want it and the group that calling for them knocking when we kahea to them to come out and come get your kupuna and you know answer mm -hmm. what now yeah. <laughs> yeah. it can happen like that that's yeah. exactly an example you know right. of the Waikiki oh. kupuna that mm -hmm. went over there we had this pilikia with uh, you know families. I'm going to not mm -hmm. say, but, yeah. you know, we promised yeah. the kupunas once they at, at our home, we said, well, from here, you're going, we're going to cuddle you, but mm -hmm. there's so much um, lili, so much jealousy, and so much uh, people mm -hmm. who thought that they knew, so we, okay, we Malama existed because you guys wasn't around, now, mm -hmm. okay, we step back, but when we step back, we're going to okay too. Because we got to okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We have to. It goes to the family. The kuleana going yeah. to you now. Yeah, it goes to the mm -hmm. family. And we, not, we walk away from yeah. it and you take care of right. yours. Cause like you said, you know, know like you said in Hawaiian, no ho oi ho yo. Yeah. Hi. Yes. You know, yeah. No ho oi ho yo. Yeah. One of, the, yeah. one of the biggest things that we were planning and it was it was arranged, we were making arrangement, everything, was those 3,000 kupuna mm -hmm. that yeah. belong back and Mokapu. Yeah. And, and they, because the families came, you know, that they thinking, okay, I relate, okay, you related to all 3000, which ones, if you, you are related to some of them, but there's other families claiming, and now it would take one or two voices that stopped that whole process. We were ready, we was ready, Hui Malama was ready, and fam mm -hmm. other families that wanted to help and, and get this job done. 3,000. Now, where are those 3,000? Back at the museum. No, they went from one mm. they went back they went? onto the base. But it, mm. You know what, no, and one one person who, well, he passed away already, but he went, he went say, he said, I like take all the kupuna, put them in one bunker, and just wrap them up with pelon. We, we just put them all inside there, one bunker. And everybody went, who he bought it went, wait a minute. I don't, you know, I mean, we were going through so much political stuff over there, even with the military. It was, it was hard. We, we had discussions with the military every time they changed the, the, the commander for the base. We had to deal with another regime, another regime, two, three times. And then you are not only dealing with the Hawaiians that couldn't see the full picture, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, they, they loved it, right? Because and they like to see us always get hakaka with each other. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, they're still out, the kupuna yeah. 3000. And we even went wrap them up in the museum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they waited mm -hmm. uh, wherever now they are. So those families who want claim and step forward, come on, you guys. Uh, yeah. We, we yeah. did our share at the poor, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. we went, we, we already, Hui Malama was dissolved. Yeah. Yeah. And Hui mm -hmm. Malama was there for the reason that all these people who never said there was this, there was that, and now they're coming for it. Good. My mm -hmm. Yeah, my Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plenty of money going out to different Ohana's going out. Nice. Because we had that experience yeah. and we tried to share it with you folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to get your own experience, yeah. but you know, mm -hmm. be careful of what you you, mm -hmm. you, you, you ask for. Yeah. Was yeah. That yeah, so like you said, uh, Office of Hawaiian Affairs now has that kind of kind of kala, yeah, that they're um yeah, tossing around they're putting out a grant or something to the families for, for that kind of stuff. So yeah. <clears throat> but hey, for all you folks, like I said, exhausting. Mm. Oh yeah. You know, not easy. It's yeah. never but, easy. And for not. you folks who have kuleana that way, you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh my feet came back, Ehu, everything. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Standing up for hours. And then, uh, yeah, we hours. like 15, 20 hour kind standing. Once you're in that realm, nobody leaves that yeah. room. Yeah. You rapping, gotta focus, rapping, rapping. rapping. You gotta do the mm -hmm. do everything. You don't just go and laugh and it's not yeah. one party. You gotta be there. You gotta then you gotta go canoe after yeah. that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. All all that all those hours you gotta, you know, you work on it. It's it's not mm -hmm. easy. But again, that's one aspect of our lives 
I'll get mm -hmm. so many more. I don't know how we were able to do all these different things that I've, you know, talked about. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and still, we, that's we another come, show. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> we we never come more. We're gonna, have, we're gonna have saga notes. The saga <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, sounds but okay. To I me. need it. I need it. My okay, you know, going. nation building. Let's go nation building. Let's go economic yeah. sovereignty. That's where we gotta yeah. go. Oh, that's that's the one, next one. Yeah. one. One little thing. I, I when we yes. were keep on the museum, this Hollywood Hine, uh, we you know we had. Uh, Lunches Harvard, Harvard. Harvard. Yeah. Uh, she, she was only 20, uh, 20s, in her 20s. And um, she's sitting next to me and I just told her, she, she said, I, I said, oh, so are you the only one in that room with the, kupuna, you know, with the EV and stuff? She goes, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it, I love it. Oh, I just love it. I love it, it's quiet and I love it. You know, and I get to document all of them and I get to examine them and all. I said, oh, really? So they're, remains from all over. And I said, gee, funny, how old are you? He said, you know, oh, I'm only 20, what, 23, 25. I said, oh, really? I said, so I saw in her, and she said, why? I said, it's funny because, you know, you're in there alone with them, but that one he named was, was, her essence was being sucked away. She looked old. Her hair was turning wow. gray. Her face was getting wrinkled. I said, there's something going on with you physically. I can see it on you. He says, you, you, you're, um, you're like an 80 year old person right now that I'm looking at, you know? And she Ooh. goes, Kuhiva. you know, she quit her job. She quit her job. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> it bothered her so much after I talked to her, but she had to really look. She, she was getting too carried away. In she that, was enjoying her in work. In that realm and, you know, in that space that she was, and they were actually sucking her, her mana. Oh, boy. So that's just that awareness. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So what, you going to do your first um, Demarie or whatever on Molokai? <laughs> well, you know, the steamatory. You going to do your first steam, uh, steamery on Molokai? You know, I, I, I need I need funding. You're going to open up your patent no, no, thing no, no, on that Molokai? Is, that, is, that is for everybody. For everywhere, I, I need. To I know, money. but why not start Molokai? I, I don't mind, but I gotta get the money for start somewhere. You know, whoever gets the money, <laughs> we know, so we can on. build it. Thing. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get together. When you, when you have a work that. that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> Boy, Cora yeah. said. We, we, we get one family. We're looking at the... mercantile. We're looking at the land of mercantile and. Let's... Um, or at Ualapue, but it it would make sense to have it on Molokai because of our financial situation. You know, right yeah. now we're sending yeah. the loved ones off island, and it, yeah. it gets expensive. Yeah. You know, there you go, Carl. So I think if we go under mercantile, they cannot deny us the help we need especially with the Rehabilitation Act. I hate that word, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> there's money. Well, we need somebody to help us. I started one business plan on it. And if we can get somebody who get that Akamai for put that together, we're gonna to need also an engineer. We're gonna need one uh, intellectual property kind of person. Then we need marketing, Uncle. that whole aspect, yeah. yeah. Technical before, services. Technical <laughs> services, we get, get us, service. Give us the money and wish us well. <laughs> <laughs> and it. We're going to ask for allocation. There you go. How much, how much money did you, were you looking at? I think we need at least half a million. To start? To create the machine and then yeah. to also take care of all the expenses of the expertise. We need a fabricator. It's got to be done perfectly. You know, it's like when pressurized machine that you got to create the bugger can blow up you know what i mean you got to be safe when we talk when we so, talk to people with the details they tell us that we have to have them sign a disclosure they're giving us all this legal stuff well we make them so sign have, one disclosure yeah we you know so we have to you know be careful because <clears throat> the kind that kind of thing the so. pattern is is but, protected with us right now and uh, we still own it and uh we need the cocoa and the mortuaries, you know, they, they're in the business already. We just got to have that machine adapted to their areas and every island can have them. 
investors yeah. or build a side build mm -hmm. to it but and, here would be good and then you create the cottage industry yeah. of if people like make hala again and they like make their own receptacle yeah. uh yeah. you know then uh, then they can come and get their own kupuna yeah. and it's clean not, not only, like burning yeah. and get no need space for bury you can take them bury in your backyard you know why is that the only culture that mm -hmm. believes in that the oceans you get different um all our so, yeah, a lot of people uh, believe in that method better, like cleaner, and you're going to get everything. You're not going to get, you know, well, you might not burnt. get the little you're tiny not... ear bone, but you can get everything. <laughs> yeah, the flesh part becomes, <laughs> but it, it's another yeah. thing. Also, so we want to go that way, you know. Yeah, I'm hoping I can do it before I holler. So, you know. Mm. And then it's a legacy we can leave for our, our children and our grandchildren so that. You know, it'll be an economic development too. You know, we need technicians, we need people to build. It's that kind. Yeah. And the, the cottage industry, if, you know, you can make one wooden uh, receptacle for an EV to be placed yeah. in, the hala, the, or whatever. You know, it's it's yeah. economic development. Mm. We want it affordable for our people too. Yeah, you know? competitive with the with, yeah. With and we want to we want to do it culturally. You know, yeah. want to instill that culturally too. You know, something really clean. And um, so while they're talking about all the old EV, we get new EV, you know, people dying every day, so they're just dying <laughs> yeah. to get in, right? You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta get some people with it as, as dark as that sounds. <laughs> we gotta prepare, yeah. I mean, we really gotta prepare, you know, you never know, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you, Kaui. Thank you, Leah. Thank you. Mahalo. Really. Yeah, we mahalo you so much for joining us tonight. It really is an honor. Mahalo Nui. Mahalo Nui. And look to the future for the saga of the Nihipalis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next week, we will have um, Hilo Senator Laura Klenacasio. And then probably some Nihipali updates after that. <laughs> <laughs> mahalo Nui. Right. Okay, mahalo, Nui. Thank you all. Oh,